On September 30th, 2011, a spokesperson of Yemen's Ministry of Defense declared that Al-Qaeda leader Anwar El Awlaki died along with other members of the organization, as well as his 16-year-old son, Abdul Rahman Anwar El Awlaki. This is what Skahil had to say about the subject. One of the most controversial drone strikes by the Obama administration was the assassination of U.S. citizen Anwar Al-Awlaki, a young Muslim cleric who became a popular spokesperson on mainstream media for his ability to articulate a moderate Muslim perspective after the attacks of 9-11. The U.S. needs to support freedom and human rights in the Muslim world. Anwar al alaki initially condemned the 9-11 attacks, condemned al-Qaeda, and supported the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. But as the war on terror spread to other countries, al alakis moderate perspective radically changed. And as the U.S. intensifies its wars in Muslim countries, al alaki starts to ratchet up his rhetoric. He's being uh, uh, pulled in for interrogations by the FBI. And it's, it's somewhat of a mystery, but he decides to leave the United States and he starts recording sermons. He crosses a line at some point where he starts saying that young Muslims in the West should either fight the United States and its allies in their own countries, meaning in the Western world, or come to places like Yemen or Afghanistan or Somalia to fight the Jihad. And so President Obama, early on in his administration, um, decides that Anwar al-Awlaki has to die. And uh, they begin hunting him with drones. And Anwar al was in fact killed on September 30th, 2011 in a drone strike directly authorized by President Obama. al was never charged with a crime related to terrorism, never given an opportunity to surrender because he wasn't charged with anything. The President of the United States, who is a constitutional lawyer and won the Nobel Peace Prize, served as the uh, prosecutor, the judge, the jury, and ultimately the executioner of an American citizen. The American Civil Liberties Union and the New York Times filed a lawsuit against the Obama administration to provide legal rationale for the government's extrajudicial killings. On May 20, 2014, after two years of silence, the Obama administration released a drone memo addressing the right to use lethal force against a U.S. citizen when a capture operation is impossible and the targeted person poses a continued and imminent threat. However, the drone memos did not address the most controversial drone strike which killed a 16-year-old American boy named Abdullah Rahman, son of Anwar al-Awlaki. Two weeks after Anwar al-Awlaki was killed, U.S. conducted another drone strike in Yemen and they killed Anwar al-Awlaki's 16-year-old son, who had nothing to do with terrorism, had nothing to do with al-Qaeda, had not seen his father in years. The Obama administration has never explained why they killed that kid. He was killed with his teenage cousins while they were sitting preparing to eat dinner. What grounds did they have to kill a 16-year-old kid? It's hard not to believe that he was killed because of the sins of the father. All of us deserve to know why that kid was killed. The reason that we chose to focus on this story is because how a society treats its own people is a good indication of how they view the rest of the world's rights. So at the end of the day, the U.S. has taken a position, and it was true under Bush and it's true under Obama, that the United States is the exceptional country in the world, and that it not only has the right to assassinate people in any country that it pleases, um, but that it's right to do so. And so the world is indeed a battlefield in the eyes of the American empire. In the war on terror, the United States has radically changed the rules of international combat by legitimizing extrajudicial targeted killings and in the process establishing a dangerous precedent for further human right abuses in global conflicts. Vanessa Bergonzoli with Jeremy Kaplan and Clara Ibarra, Telesur, New York. <laughs>